esteemed, I'll say esteemed uh, speaker today, uh, our guest, Ryan DeRusso, all the way from Long Island, New York. Now, if you know what it's like, you start your business, you want to make money. We all do. We want to make money, so it's income, income, income. But at some point, if you're bright enough, you might think, hey, I'm on this hamster wheel. I'm working, working, working. And this is where Ryan comes in, because Ryan says, instead of you just working hard, what about if you created a situation where your business becomes an asset which creates wealth for you? And if you manage your money well, that asset can reward you in the future. So today we are talking about not just income, not just bringing money in, but how do we create wealth? How do we manage finances? How do we do all of that? So Ryan, welcome, welcome to the Business and Wealth Show. Absolutely. Thanks for happen, having me. I love talking about this topic. I love talking about the you know, self-employment sort of journey. I've been on one for uh, about 15 years now. So always welcome this, these types of conversations. So before we get into that, and what was your entrepreneurial journey anyway? What what happened to you? How did you get you know, how did you start off as an entrepreneur? Or is it been the same way for you all the time? Yeah, so I um I originally started my career in journalism and I uh wrote for like US publications like uh Fortune, Money, some like big US publications. Uh, but I never wanted like my boss's job or anything like that. It yeah. just like, it never appealed to me because it just seemed like way more work uh -huh. for way more hours and only slightly more pay. And so I was like, well, how else could I do this? And so very early on in my career, I decided to go out on my own, become a contract writer and create a client, a client base and all that sort of stuff that you do when you're sort of in a service-based um, solo business like I was. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's how I worked for many, many years. And then after a while um, and through many growing pains and figuring out what I should be doing, what I shouldn't be doing from a financial standpoint, uh -huh. I realized I wanted to work with one-on-one -on -one with people. So I became a financial planner, got certified, all that sort of jazz, and then uh, started working one-on-one -on -one with people to do help people not make the same mistakes I made, essentially, um, in the process. Well, I mean, you, you, you nailed it there. You got it. So you started helping other people. Now... One of the key things I want to discuss here is how do, how, how should entrepreneurs, small business owners specifically, manage their money? You know, because some of them, what they do, they mix up their business money with their personal money. They mix up their business finance with their personal finance. So they take from their business what they need and um, really it's messy. So how should that be balanced? Yeah, you really like people, uh, you know, are, are always sort of like you need to separate the business and the personal, right? The two things just have to be separate. That's why we get like this different business structures and we have, um, you know, different uh, balance sheets for the personal and the, the business. But in reality, there is a lot of overflow. Like if you need a new roof, you may feel a lot less good about your business if you now need to pay for a roof that you couldn't mm -hmm. afford to begin with. Or if you need to invest in the business um, and you need to put more money into that, you may have far less to work with on the business or on the personal side. And um, realizing sort of that dynamic and creating uh, safety nets in both areas. So we're not sort of having to manage our feelings about like our personal side within the business or the business impacting our personal. The more you can do that, the more like sort of protections you're going to have and the better off the business is going to be because one, it's standing on its own. It's operating on its own. It's not just a slush fund for, you know, whatever's going on in your life, that sort of thing. Um, but at the same time, you're able to really focus and invest in the business because you feel comfortable in the personal side. And is that easier said than done? Or do you, does someone need to be trained or is there a process or step-by-step -step they could follow? Because if someone's developed these bad habits already, getting to them to change overnight could be a bit of a stretch, I should think. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Uh, you know, I mean, it's one thing I work with clients all the time is sort of creating that balance. And it's going to take time uh, just from like, let's just say something simple like an emergency fund, right? Um, everyone knows they have to have an emergency fund of some sort. And uh, but you can't just like 
like in the US, you can't just discover $30,000 underneath the couch most of the time. And so it's going to take a little bit of time sometimes to, to get there. But, it, you know, with consistent processes and efforts, you will get there. It's just mm -hmm. you have to give it time to take fold. Um, you know, so much, uh, so many people that I work with, like I, cause I, one thing, one group that I often work with are private practice therapists and private practice therapists in the U S they don't typically like a, a lot of them work for themselves, but they're forced to work for themselves. It's not like they went out and were like, um, you know, I, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm going to go build a business. It's that's how the industry works. And so they don't really think about themselves as an entrepreneur. And so, part of the process is also realizing that they do have a business that they have to to create these protections for themselves and create that separation a little bit um so you know their practice can grow and whatnot and one way i get this across to them is cuz one one thing that they often come to me or when they come to me they are completely burnt out they are so tired of creating that income every year right. and trying to just get by that way mm -hmm. um and so because of that burnout, they're willing to listen. And with, with willing to listen, they can then start the steps to kind of actually, you know, grow the business as opposed to like try to add clients or add an extra hour to the day or something like that, yeah. which is what they had been doing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For a lot of entrepreneurs without right knowledge, what they've done, they turned their business into a job. And that job, after a while, they don't want to be in that job anymore, but they'll no. sell created right <laughs> so this yeah, not only have you cre oh go ahead. go ahead go ahead go ahead i said not only have you created a job but you have two jobs because now you're business owner and uh the worker so you're doing two jobs uh at the same time and yeah. that's why the burnout exists because there's no break yeah that's where the burnout kicks in so that that segues away quite nicely into as a business owner how does one create wealth mm -hmm. so um it's going to depend a little bit on country, right? But mm -hmm. in the U.S., for instance, there's only three ways to really invest your money. You can invest in the markets, you can invest in business or businesses, um, or you can invest in real estate. And that's really the only three ways. And so you need to, one, create that income. And then once you have that income and you understand what you need from a personal side, you need to then start using some of that extra profit to start reinvesting into these other outlets. Um, a good example is the business. So because of my clientele, a lot of them, you know, will say, ah, my business is worth nothing. It's never going to go beyond me because they haven't taken the steps to actually, you know, create or build space for employees, create systems that they can mm -hmm. manage and operate. Um, and so when they come to me, yeah, I also put their asset, the business as an asset of worth zero dollars but if we can build that into something that can be sold down the line that is huge for them personally um but also just allows that business to really function without them and so that's so cool right because you're spending so much time in your life yeah. trying to build this thing uh -huh. and you just want it to disappear when you're done no let's let's like turn this into something that can like live beyond you and you can reap the rewards down the line at some point so that that's that's really sort of the three things that we're talking a lot with them about sort of how we can create space to invest. So you said the three ways to to really create wealth. Um, and I think it's not only the, the, the US, I think it's globally as well, because uh, we have, you know, I speak globally in over 50 countries. Um, and you said in the markets, in real estate, or some sorts of business, those are the three ways. And I, I agree with you. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now, for the for the business owner who is starts listening to your advice, they start putting processes and systems and start looking for talent to to follow those processes, having a team in place. Now you're helping them, you're advising them on on creating that true asset. How easy or how how difficult is that that transition from business operator day in day out to what we say in business owner, where you are overseeing, and it's a different set of skills. How, how, what, what's your comments on that? Yeah, and that's really a personality thing. Like for some people, it's like the thing they've been missing. You know, they have been wanting to get out from the day to day for so long, 
and they're a little older, they're a little farther along in their years, um, like operating the business that they actually want to be the teacher. They want to be the, right. the overseer and they want to like guide people. Now they may have some concerns about like what managing people is like, because, you know, it's not all like teaching, you know, there's obviously some other aspects to it, but, um, but they really welcome it. Others are very reticent. Um, and, you know, sometimes in turning that, that income business into something beyond that is not possible for them because they are just so reticent to it. And that's fine. But that just means you have to invest in the markets, real estate or other businesses. You can't just you create view your business as something that's going to come uh, beyond something that you are. Um, and then, you know, in the terms of the systems, like that type of stuff um, can be outsourced like that. That is something that you can find good help for and, and whatnot. And so sometimes it's also just sort of a mental shift where it's not just you doing all the work, but it's actually finding uh, a person who can actually guide you in this process, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's, you know, creating a system to manage employees or a system to manage your technology or marketing or whatever. Um, but having good people around you is going to be so key in that process. Awesome. Great, great answer. Now, from a tax perspective, because what we're saying is your business is doing well, you're creating income, you've got excess cash flow, profits are looking good. And what we're saying is put it into other assets that you choose. Now, what is the process of doing that from a tax perspective without getting um, hit on personal income tax or other taxes, if you could talk mm -hmm. about that? Yeah. And I'm going to talk uh, broadly, but like, make sure if you're listening in other countries, like, like you're looking at your own individual sort of country tax code and whatnot. But like, for instance, in the U.S., there's certain like retirement plans that you can choose where now it's going into that and you're not getting taxed up front. You're getting taxed when you actually use the income down the line or the savings down the line uh, when, you know, your total income has dropped considerably, probably because you're no longer working, you're in retirement, that sort of stuff. Um, and so there's ways to sort of manage that. Um, there's, you know, as you're building, you're also going to be creating you know, like retirement plans potentially for your employees. So um, giving them perks and things like that. And when doing so, there's tax advantages that you can take advantage of even as you're giving. Um, so, you know, you're still giving to your um your employees because you're creating incentives. You want them to stick around. You want, you're training them. You're, you're finding good quality talent. Um, and so sometimes, honestly, that's the bigger hurdle to get past for some people is the fact that now they're kind of supporting other people in some way. And the fact that they're giving incentive programs to employees and whatnot. And that's really hard for someone to kind of kind of just get their mind around, you know, because if like, you know, money's coming in. Now you're taking, you know, instead of half for yourself, you're taking like a fourth for yourself and three fourths to everything else. But that fourth is so much more than it used to be because now there's like five, 10, 30 people working for you. So that's actually one of the bigger hur hurdles from a, like a just dollars and cents perspective. Um, and so that's a big one. I mean, just looking at the local tax laws and figuring out where they're incentivizing Empl uh, employers to mm -hmm. invest and uh, give to employees and utilizing those services and tools so you can get those tax advantages. Because um, really, that's really what government is, is doing is they're incentivizing sort of whatever sort of action uh, they want to encourage through tax credits, through tax breaks and whatnot. So you might as well take advantage of them. Perfect. Perfect. Great answer there. And yeah, I, I, I agree, Ryan check your particular country tax code, speak to your tax advisor, speak to your CPA or accountant, as we say here in the UK, Absolutely. Uh, to get the right information. So the um, one of the things I wanted to talk about is for a lot of um, small business owners, and as we know, small business owners account for over 80% of, of, of the businesses, whether it's in the UK, Europe, or, or America. Now, for a lot of them, they feel financially unstable at times. How does one, as, a, as an entrepreneur, how do you get to a place where you can feel more financially stable, financially more 
secure, fin financially more independent. Do you have any tips and strategies for that? Yeah, I, uh, so one of the, uh, there's like different stages of this like journey, right? So when you're first starting out and, you know, for the video viewers, like your cash flows look like <laughs> a roller coaster. I mean, it is up, up and down. You never know kind of how it's going to go. And what we need to do is go from that to this. We need to create a straight line. Um, and, and that is until you have enough profits to where, you know, it matters far less, right? Because you, you, you're only going to spend so much in a month and whatnot. Um, but how do we go from that roller coaster to the straight line is we need to figure out how much you, and this is kind of what I was talking about, where there's this line between the business and the personal, but it's not so it's, it's more blurred. Because how much you need from the business right now is really going to be dependent on how much you actually spend in the personal. Um, and so if you're able to cut back and reduce your spending while you're trying to grow the business, you need far less profits at the beginning in order to get by. And so then you're figuring out sort of how much you're spending every month and you're mm. only paying yourself that much. You're not paying anything above it, even if profits are kind of high right now. Because what we want to do is create the emergency fund within the business and an emergency fund within the personal. So no matter what's happening in the business, you know how much you're getting paid every single month. Uh, like we look at self-employment as this thing where I don't have a salary and I can you know, make as much money as I want. But until you have reached that point where you're really making a lot of money, you do have a salary and you need to stick to that salary because the business needs the funds right now. And that, that's really one of the kind of the first steps, especially for uh, younger entrepreneurs and whatnot, is we're figuring out sort of that. And, um, you know, people that I work with sometimes don't view themselves as like the tech, uh, you know, entrepreneur who's in the basement or the mother's basement, uh -huh. you know, building the business and whatnot. But if they take a little bit of that mindset, reduce their spending on the personal side, they're going to actually be better off uh, because they can create the, that balanced cash flow. Right, right. Good, good point there. So, Ryan, as you're talking about cash flow, what are the what are the steps or the processes that small business owners, especially, need to have in place to have better finances, better cash flow? Um, any anything you want to say on that? Yeah, I mean, I have a system in place. Like, there's a, a few different sort of what's called behavioral finance uh, ways to kind of. Um, pay yourself on a regular basis. And so some like a concept called profit first, where they're mm -hmm. actually taking profits out first and then figuring out expenses in the business after. Um, and that's a good way to one, if like you're particularly a person who kind of puts themselves last, you're inherently putting yourself first in the situation. Mm -hmm. And so that can be beneficial. Um, for others, it's not so much um, like... For others, it's not so much like um, how much they're going to or like the bank accounts that are going from one to the other. For others, it's just sort of understanding where all of their expenses are going to go in a, a period of time. And so having a clear picture of that is going to be important for that type of person. Um, but that that really gets into sort of the individualized person. You need, kind of need to protect yourself from yourself in those situations. Mm -hmm. So what? how do you... What is your personality around money? How do you spend money? Uh, what are your shortcomings when it comes to money? And then build a system or incorporate systems that protect you from you in those situations. Right, right. On that note, tell us how, what, what's your main focus with small business owners and entrepreneurs? What is it you're helping them do? Um, and what is your process? What is your system? What are your steps? What makes you different from other business coaches or wealth coaches or wealth advisors or financial advisors, you know, what is the difference for someone thinking, oh, is Ryan a financial advisor? Is he a financial broker? Is he a business coach? What is he? You know, people put label yeah. things, but what makes right. you different that, you know, why do you, why do your clients value you really? Yeah. I mean, there's a few different things. Like one, when we're talking about financial advising, um, so much, is a personal personality thing. So if I connect with you, you're comfortable with me talking about your true reality of your finances, you're mm -hmm. gonna have a lot better experience because um, you trust me 
And I'm, you know, not going to put you in a bad place. So on the top level, there's that. Um, For my clients in particular, particularly like say, like my therapy clients, right? They love the fact that um, they're having an issue. And I've had other clients have that same issue. So I can say, hey, you know, Mac, I hear you. I, I know someone who's going, who's gone through exactly what you're going through. Let me connect you two so you two can have a conversation because I'm the finance guy. I'm not necessarily the therapy practice owner guy, um, but I am guiding people through those processes and I know kind of what each one's gone through and how they can help another. Um, so I love, that's honestly one of my favorite things I get to do for my clients is like build their kind of network there. Um, and so that kind of stands out. A bit. And then it's just generally like the fact that I have looked at the balance sheets and the the income statements of so many of these self-employed businesses and therapy practices and my own that I've actually gone through some of these steps myself. And I did it in writing. And you want to talk about a tough, <laughs> a tough uh, place to uh, get a good uh, paycheck. It's in the writing world. And so, um, you know, if you can do it there, you can do it anywhere type of thing. Um, and so I think my clients really appreciate the fact that like I've lived a similar experience that they've lived. And, and so I'm very compassionate to what they're going through and kind of have solutions, um, you know, within arm's reach anyways, a lot of times. Got it. Thank you. You know, um, I wanted to talk about also, Ryan, that for a lot of entrepreneurs, especially those who don't manage their finances well, it's about when it comes to the end of the year, they'll figure it out. You know, maybe the receipts have been coming in, they stuffed it in an envelope somewhere. There is no ongoing bookkeeping, no bookkeeper in place. And all these things we know are very dangerous if you're not managing your finances, your money, there's no one doing bookkeeping, you're waiting to the end of the year to under, you know, send all this stuff to an accountant to tabulate and, and, and work out and tell you what your tax is. What, one thing is, what's the dangers of operating that way? And how does one overcome that and, and, and build better habits? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, like part of, um, one thing I would say to that is if you think of any business like uh, that you're striving to become, um, like what's the like the structure of their, their business? They probably have a CEO mm. and then right underneath the CEO is probably a CFO. And because you are a young, growing business, you are both the CEO and the CFO. Now, what would happen if you had hired a CFO and they ignored the finances the entire year? You would fire that person immediately. Mm -hmm. Um, And so essentially, if you're doing that, you need to fire yourself as the CFO. You need to find someone that um, will actually handle this on a regular basis for you. A bookkeeper like for the clients that I serve, there are three like people that they need around. First, it's bookkeeper. Second, it's someone um, like me. And then third, it might be a therapy coach, maybe. Um, and and if you do not have that bookkeeper, I should say it's a CPA as well. Um, yeah. If you do not have that bookkeeper in place, then you're kind of leaving your business at the whim of your whatever is going on in your mind at the time. So um, if you're feeling good in the business, it's like, okay, great. I'm feeling flush. This is great. Uh, Let's reinvest in the business, that sort of thing. And if you're not, you don't know what's going on. You're ignoring it. So uh, things, you know, build up upon each other. Debt happens. Maybe loans happen, that sort of thing. And now next time things turn around, you're in a lot bigger trouble and and whatnot. So um, I would say one, realize the, that that it's not meant for the end of the year. It's, it's required throughout just like any other business. And then two, if you're doing that, fire yourself as a CFO. Right. I love that. I love that. Fire yourself as a CFO. So now you've got to yeah. find someone who can do that. Maybe something you don't enjoy doing, but it's going to make a big difference to your business. And on that note, Ryan, what are the... Um, what are the, you know, if they someone has got a bookkeeper in place already, what are the statements, financial statements they should be looking at each week or each month or whatever? Mm-hmm. I mean, the one that I look at the most is the PL or the profit and loss statement, income statement. Um, and that's just because it shows me what's coming in and what's going out and where sort of the biggest gaps are. Because I've seen so many, like when, like, 
for instance, in the therapy space, right, they have um, an hourly session with a client and their, their therapist gets, you know, 50% of that session. And so the business owner gets the other 50%. Right. Well, if I come in and see that, like, oh, wow, this person's getting this, you know, employee is getting 60%. Meanwhile, your expenses are essentially meaning that uh, are taking 40% away. Well, now you're only walking away on a $200 uh, session, $20 for that hour. So you're going to pay $20 an hour essentially as the business owner. Mm -hmm. That ain't good. So mm -hmm. let's take a closer look at that. So understanding sort of taking, not just taking the, the P&L statement, but breaking it down to the client level or the product level and seeing how much you're making on each thing and what is causing you to either be in the red or where could you improve to improve the sort of margins that that'll help um, a lot. And I, I don't think um, and th that's honestly where some bookkeeping, some some financial advice um, and analysis really comes into play, because it's hard uh, when you're in the day to day to recognize sort of like everything seems so important. Like mm -hmm. I have to invest in this. I have to do that. But if you can put it in sort of a ratio form, you might realize that like you're not actually gaining from the investment. And that's really what we're looking to do with any of these things. Perfect. Thank you. Now, for those who want to, some great advice, by the way, those who want to get, uh, learn more from you, get hold of you, what's the best way for them to be able to do that? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I work for a group called United Financial Planning Group, but I have a kind of marketing arm at thinkingcapfinancial.com. So you can go there. Um, and I actually have a ebook that I just launched. It's about how to turn solo income into wealth. And um, uh, Mac has promised to put the link in the uh, show notes, so uh, I'll I'll send it along them because it's a it's a bad link, you know. So <laughs> I don't want to say the whole link right now. No problem. So okay, so yeah, they can click the link and then it'll take them. Yeah, away. exactly. It's free okay. download. Like you just leave your email and you are good to go. And this digital book will allow them to do what exactly? So it talks a little bit about what I was talking about: how to turn income into wealth. So what are the ways? those three ways, investing in markets, investing in, in business, investing in real estate, and sort of how to think about as you're getting started. All of this is a lifelong process. All of this is an education. And it requires education and whatnot. And so this is kind of the first step into educating yourself about how to turn uh, that income, get off that hamster wheel and start growing some wealth in the business. Perfect. Excellent. Thank you very much for that, Ryan. You've been listening to the Business and Wealth Show with Ryan DeRusso and Mac Atram, the business and wealth coach. And it's been a pleasure hearing Ryan, who's who, who's also saying what we've been saying. Now, you've got to take action. You've got to realize that if your finances are, are not in order right now, you don't have the right foundation to build wealth. Get it in order. Use the right systems. Check out Ryan's book. Make sure you click the link. And also follow us. Um, if you're not following already or subscribed, depending on which channel you, you are on, you know the algorithm loves engagement. So make some comments. Give us a thumbs up. Give us an emoji. Give us something. Tell us what you enjoyed about this particular show, um, what you enjoyed about what Ryan shared with you, and what were the things that you picked up on as well. So thank you very much for being and listening and watching. So Ryan, any final words before we, uh, we come off now? Uh, no, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. One thing I will say is everyone has a financial journey. We all have a goal that we want to reach or an endpoint, but uh, don't forget to look back and see how far you've come in the process. Perfect. And by tracking that, you will get there. Ryan, thank you for jumping on. Thank you for sharing so many golden nuggets with us. Uh, and, and it's a key thing to business, build wealth, not just income. Thank you, Ryan. Take care until we speak again. Yeah, have a good one. Thank you. Bye for now.